So today I'm going to go through tone of a piano, which is obviously one of the most important things when people are coming to buy a piano that they, they're going to be looking out for. Um, some people like the really hard tone, punchy, loud. Uh, other people, something in between, and other people like something really soft. So today I'm going to go through the stock, some of the stock we've got here, go from hardest all the way through to some of the softest. Uh, so we're going to make a comparison between Yamaha, Kawai, Furic, and Ritmuller, and I'll even play an old Blutner as well to show you how soft pianos can really be. It's got brand new Able Blutner pattern hammers on it. So I'm just going to also do some uh, decibel checks as well, and we'll show those in the video. And you can sh see the alteration in curve, so the alteration in drop off after you strike the initial note. And I'll do a middle C on every single piano, you'll visually be able to see the sharp drop off. So on a Yamaha, you get a real sharp drop off. And then the more mellow a piano, the more slower the drop off, mainly because you get a higher punch with the louder, harder piano, so you get a steeper curve. Okay, so I'll just play through each one as well, I'll try and play something similar on each piano, and then we'll do the decibel as well. So that was the Yamaha U3, and it's a 1980 U3. They will all vary. Um, with, if there's two, two or three years between each model, then they will vary a little bit, because of every model of piano, over the years, they will change their source of wood, and it's been seasoned differently, grown, grown at a different rate. Um, also, you've got the felts as well, <clears throat> which have all got different compaction. So they will vary just slightly from model to model through the years, but um, this is a generalization. And today on this video, you're gonna see the massive difference there is between tones of different pianos. We're not gonna go into touch today, it's just gonna be tone. So how loud, how hard, how mellow, okay? So next, this is the uh, Kawai K500. This is brand new, this isn't used, um, and you'll notice this is going to be slightly mellower than the U3. Um, a lot of them, um, our clients from the East, expats, they all seem to prefer the Kawai because the quality of the Kawai is slightly superior to the Yamaha due to their Millennium 3 action with the carbon fibre jack, which really does help with that. <laughs> Don't lose, there's no loss of energy in a carbon fibre jack, whereas they worked out that in a wooden jack you can lose a little bit of energy. So I'm just going to play, try and play the same similar piece I played last time on the uh, Yamaha U3. choosing the piano comes down to it, it is a personal choice, what you feel is right for you. So you might like the real hard punchiness, uh, but for other people they don't. It's a very personal thing, you really have to go and try the pianos at the end of the day, and that's it, no shortcuts. Okay, so now we've got the Furic. This is the Furic. Uh, it's not quite um, the same size as the U3 or the K500. It's a one two, two so it's a good 8 centimetres, 9 centimetres shorter. Um, but it's still going to give you a fair idea of a difference in tone, I think. Um, so this is uh, the Furic one two two.
So next in the lineup, we've got the Rittmuller RS130. Uh, the RS models consist of quite a few German, and well, it's all German and Swiss felts. Um, the Rittmuller factory, largest factory in the world. Solid spruce soundboards. Um, they've got their own spruce forests, their own foundry. They make models for some quite well-known other piano manufacturers in the world. Um, and these are proven really popular with our clients, mainly because of their mellow tone. Uh, very European sounding, as you'd expect with the German Swiss felts. Um, very good pianos, best value for money there is in the world for a piano at the moment. And this is a name that's gonna become more wide and known as time goes on. So if you're looking for a piano which possibly got good selling on value in the future, these are the ones to look out for, buy them cheap, and you'll still get some of your money back in five or 10 years time. Right. Yamaha being the hardest, Kawhi's the next one, and then the Rittmuller being one of the most mellow we have in the new stock we've got. And that's why I stock generally these three brands. The Yamaha, really hard, punchy, that really originally built for the American market, who always used to like their Baldwin pianos, and they like the big, loud, brass sounds. Um, not their fault. And um, then um, the Kawhi's, they've come along, a bit more mellow, very popular, um, happy medium I'd say in between the two. But for those people who just want something a bit more mellow, the Ritman is the one to go for. So just for an example of um, how mellow a piano can get, weirdly this is a Blutner from 1901. It's six foot one in length. Um, it's been fully restored, it's got all brand new strings on it and it's got patent Bluten ha Blutner hammers on it. Um, and this is really, we used to have a huge tuning connection back in uh, the last century, um, doing lots of schools, and a huge private clientele numbers. Uh, we were tuning between 10 and 15 pianos a day. Um, we used to tune a lot of Blutners, a lot of Bechsteins, a lot of European pianos. We never came across the Yamaha piano really until the 1990s in the in UK, in our, on our tuning round. Um, so most of the pianos we come across are very European sounding. Now that obviously we always knew the Blutner was the most mellow, and this is very typical of a, a mellow Blutner grand. You can put different hammers on them and make them a bit more brighter, but this is pretty mellow. Ideal if you're a, a singing teacher and you don't want to overpower the singing, so this is, this is a great piano for that.